Hi. Well, I hope you enjoyed week one. Uh, we'll be spending much more time from now on in the biblical text itself than we did in that introductory week. Uh, and um, that's, in a way, the most important thing about the entire course. My wife is inclined to say that everything I say and write is designed uh, to encourage you to read the Bible. Uh, and uh, she's right about that. Uh, it's easy for books about the Bible to be a substitute for reading the Bible. Um, the focus in this course and in other fuller courses is on you reading the Bible uh, for yourself, not in discovering what other people have said about the Bible or what they tell you about the Bible. When people do courses in fuller, they often will say sheepishly uh, to me, well, actually, I hadn't read the Old Testament really much before. In fact, I hadn't really read it at all. Um, and in a sense, they're right to be sheepish, but I don't um, uh, make a great thing of it now because I know that often the case. That's just how things are. What's more troubling in a way, uh, but also funny in its implications, is that they often think that they know what the Bible says, what the Old Testament says, because their Sunday school, their Sunday school teacher has told them. And I love um, one aspect of being a professor, uh, which is sending people away to read some chunk of the Bible and having them come back and saying, but it doesn't say what my Sunday school teacher said it said. And uh, maybe you'll have that kind of experience. We won't just be reading the Bible and we won't just be reading books, modern books about the Bible. As you know um, already, uh, we'll be looking at some other ancient Middle Eastern texts that come from the same sort of period as the Bible. And in particular, this week, um, at the Babylonian creation story, which is illuminating for the background it provides to the Genesis creation story. Because when you read the Babylonian creation story, you discover what a number of the contemporaries of the Israelite people in Old Testament times believed about creation. And at least when Israelites were taken off into exile in Babylon, they would have been acquainted with what the Babylonians thought about creation. And you can see ways in which the Genesis 1 story is, as it were, saying to Israelites, you know what those, what those Babylonians tell you about creation? And you know how you're tempted to believe it because those Babylonians are impressive guys? Well, I'll tell you the real truth about creation. And so it's illuminating to look at the Genesis story over against uh, ancient, other ancient views about creation, as it's illuminating to look at the Genesis creation story over against modern alternative views of creation. And one of the things that we shall do in the course um, of this week is look at the relationship between what Genesis has got to say about creation and what scientific theories are about creation have got to say. That's a kind of subset, in a way, uh, of questions about the historical value of Genesis and we'll, we'll be looking at questions about the historical value of Genesis, both at Genesis, both in connection with Genesis 1 to 11 and in connection with Genesis 12 to 50. And then in Genesis 12 to 50, we'll also be looking uh, at what family was like and what marriage was like uh, in those contexts that are reflected in Genesis and that are presumably the context in which the people who themselves read Genesis lived. And you may well find that reading these stories about marriages and families is pretty discouraging because they are in messes that are often the same or at least similar to messes that we get into. Uh, it's discouraging in a way but encouraging in another way because the way in which Genesis works with regard to marriage and family isn't simply by presenting us with an ideal that we can't live up to but describing, us, describing for us people who were making similar mistakes to us and then showing how God was at work. And I think it's pretty encouraging throughout the Old Testament how we read about how God is at work through people who are at least um, as sinful as we are. So get on with it.